Hi, it's Bonnie here with So Inspired by Bonnie with another Tuesday's tip. And today what I thought we would discuss would be shopping for embroidery software. Um, let me get the computer over here set up so that I can see everybody's questions in case we have some questions along the way. And get everybody, see everybody. So be sure to let me know if you're here or not. Just go ahead and comment in the um, comments below. And we're going to go ahead and uh, get started. And at the end of it, I will answer any questions that we may have along the way. So... Maybe you just got yourself a new embroidery machine, or maybe you've been embroidering for many, many years, but the in, um, embroidery software has kind of gotten the better of you. Hi, Carol. Hi, Judy. Good to see you. Well, talk with you anyway. <laughs> you can see me. I can't see you yet. Um, anyway, uh, with the embroidery software, there are so many options out there. It can be mind-boggling, and you don't know where to start or where to begin. So let's kind of hit on some of those topics so that when you go shopping for the embroidery software, you're a little better armed and know a little bit more of what you want so that when the dealer asks you some questions you might be able to answer them intelligently so that you can get the best fit for your wants and needs. Now first off when you get your computer home from wherever you've purchased it it's not going to see or be able to see I should say embroidery files. Uh, it can see all kinds of uh, images um, whether they're JPEG or, you know, GIF or PNG or whatever. It can see all of that stuff, but you get home and you want to see your embroidery files and they won't pull up on your computer. So that's normally where I've seen people run into their problems from the get-go is that they want to just be able to see the designs on their computer so that they can tell what they have and make a better choice of what they want to sew out. Um, a little bit of history about me. I used to work for a dealer for, gosh, 13 some odd years, and I was fortunate enough to be able to do a little bit of everything. I used to teach embroidery classes. I used to do serger classes. I used to do continuing ed kept classes. And then I got into the software, and that's kind of where my specialty lied, was uh, with software classes. So. I got asked this question a lot. What software do I need? And invariably I would look back and I would say, well, what do you want to do? And I know that kind of seems like a really vague question, but it's not. You need to sit down and think when the last time you were embroidering that maybe that design would be perfect if only it would be, you know, be blank. Um, be it, maybe it should have been a little bit bigger. Maybe it should have been a little bit smaller. Maybe it was bulletproof and you wanted to remove some density from the darn design. Maybe um, there was a bunch of flowers in the design and you wanted to take one of those flowers and separate it from the rest of the design and create a whole new design. You know, maybe a bunch of the single little flowers in a row. Maybe you want to merge a couple of designs together. Maybe you want to change up some of the colors and see it on the computer screen. Um, now that's a pretty tall order, but do you know all of that is covered in what I call editing kind of software. To me, there's really two basic classes of software. There's the editing software, which allows you to manipulate an existing design every which way. And then there's the full-blown digitizing software, which allows you to take an image and make a stitch file or an embroidery design out of it. Now, embroidery files are also known as stitch files. 
and an embroidery file has all kinds of stitch information in it so that your embroidery machine can sew it out. It can't sew out an image because it has absolutely no stitch information in it. But an embroidery design has all those fun little stitches in it, whether it be a straight stitch, a zigzag, a satin, a decorative stitch, a fill stitch. All of that is packed into that embroidery file, also known as a stitch file. And editing software can take existing embroidery files and change them up all kinds of ways. So a lot of people really want editing software when they think they want digitizing software. Another editing kind of software are um, cataloging software. Maybe you just want to see the designs on your computer, be able to locate them, you know, organize them and uh, see a little bit better view on your computer and convert from one format to another. That's all kind of in your cataloging kind of software, which again to me falls under the editing software um, category. Um, now, then you've got your digitizing software, which I mentioned briefly. The digitizing software is more for your power user, I, I would say. It has a higher learning curve. I've uh, one time when I was talking to Steve Wilson, the owner of Anita Good Design, he said that he figures from someone coming in the door to being able to put their designs out there, it takes them about one year to train somebody on digitizing software. So you need to be willing to invest the time if you want to do digitizing. It's not something you're going to learn overnight. Sure, a lot of it, well, I think all of the programs that are digitizing programs have what's called auto-digitizing in them. Some programs do a better job of that than the others, but none of the auto-digitizing programs um, or designs that I have seen auto-digitize come out quite as good as a manually digitized design. So. If you're looking for designs that don't have a bunch of jump stitches and things like that, you're going to want a manually digitized design with digitizing software. My poochies come up to say hi. He's <laughs> Sammy. He's a golden doodle. Anyway, so you have um, the digitizing software, which, again, has a higher learning curve than your editing software got more bells and whistles to it, more options available for it. The thing about editing software, uh, editing software, I also like to call it multilingual. Editing software is built to read all the different file types, or not file types, but all the different uh, embroidery file types that are available, whether it be for a brother machine, a baby log machine, a Viking, a Bernina, whatever. It is built to read all those different formats and convert it or change it and manipulate it. So um, your editing software is what I call multilingual. Now that's not to say it's going to read the latest version of your particular machine. It might not. But it'll, it'll read some version of your machine's format. So it might read a lower version, but not the latest and greatest. Because sometimes it takes a while for everybody to kind of catch up. Um, so that's what it's built for. That's what it's the best at. Digitizing software is built to create a design from scratch. It's built to take a design that was an image, whether it be a clip art, a... Uh, a drawing, a picture, I mean any kind of image, if you can scan it in, whether it be on a napkin from the restaurant to a clip art that you paid for, if you can scan it in, it can work as a backdrop that you can manually digitize and create a design. Images have absolutely no stitch information on them, so you can't take an image and expect to put it on your flash drive or what have you, what your machine uses to read designs and have the machine see it. That's just not going to happen. 
you need the stitch information in there. So that's what digitizing software will do. Now, editing software will start anywhere from under $100 on up to several hundred dollars. The digitizing software is going to run around, I'm talking list prices here, the digitizing software is going to run around a couple of grand. So there's a significant difference in the price points between editing software and digitizing software. And if you don't want to make designs from scratch, then you probably don't need full-blown digitizing software. Another question I get asked a lot is, well, do since I have a baby lock machine, do I have to get baby lock software? No, that's not true. The same can be said for any brand of machine. You don't have to stick with the same brand of software as you have for your machine. That's not to say that there aren't maybe some benefits here or there if you did, but it's not absolutely necessary. Um, I don't have the same software, although I used to have the same software as my machine, I don't any longer. And I can guarantee you, uh, if you're buying designs from the internet or if you buy designs that are uh, prepackaged, even those cards from way back when, when we used to use the embroidery cards, those were not digitized in that specific machine's brand software. Those were digitized in a commercial digitizing software. So you don't have to have the same brand software as you do your machine. So you might want to shop your dealer and see what kind of classes they offer. If they offer any classes, um, ask to see their, their newsletter, to see um, you know what their class offerings are. And if they do offer classes in software, I know a lot of uh, software products have Facebook groups available, and there's a lot of help on the Facebook groups. Um, so you can go there. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there for the individual types of software, so you might check there as well. But the um, a lot of people really and truly, all they need is editing software. They want to change up existing designs. Maybe they want to add lettering to an existing design. Again, to me, that's editing software. There's some lettering programs that come with a bunch of fonts already preloaded in them that are professionally digitized that you can just type them out and a lot of those lettering programs also will allow you to use true type fonts which again are kind of a graphic sort of thing it's a little different animal but very similar and you can convert those into lettering um, embroidery files as well not all true type fonts will convert into lettering as well as a professionally digitized font that might be pre-programmed into your uh, lettering uh, software. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, but I hope, um, oh, another thing I wanted to mention, I'm looking at my notes here because I didn't want to forget anything. Some of the editing software will allow you to also uh, view SVG files which are files that can be seen by a lot of the home cutting machines like your Scan and Cut or your Silhouette Cameo. Um, so those are that's kind of fun. Or they'll actually help create SVG files so that you can use with your Scan and Cut or your uh, Silhouette Cameo. So that's pretty cool. If you have an embroidery design and you want to create a cutting file, you can do that with some of uh, certain types of editing software. I'm not saying you can do it with all editing software, but that's one of the options in some of them. Uh, in Brilliance, I know, does that. And in Brilliance has a great um, uh, editing software that can actually, you can move up. You can buy different modules like lettering or, um, you know, they have a beginner, which is the uh, I can't remember the their starter package and then you can build on to to it as you grow as an embroiderer and you want to do more you can actually add to the Embrilliance program which is pretty cool uh, it's made by the same guy Brian Bailey that made designers gallery so you baby lock folks out there if you're familiar with the designers gallery line of products uh, uh, with their hoop works and all of that sort of thing 
and brilliance is basically the same one. Um, there's very few programs out there, I might add, that will uh, work on a Macintosh as well as they work on Windows. And in Brilliance is one of them, and the uh, Baby Lock version, uh, the Designer's Gallery suite there will also work with uh, Macintosh. They've uh, changed that over so you can use Macintosh with their product as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, because there's not many out there that will do that. Um, let's see what else we have. I will say that on the digitizing software, since their main focus is to create a design from scratch, um, they're not sometimes as good as, at manipulating already uh, created stitch files. So they're really good at creating their own design, manipulating, can't talk today, manipulating the Dickens out of their own created design, but when it comes to bringing in a, a, a foreign foreigner, um, sometimes you'll run into some issues with the digitizing program because that's not their first focus or intent of what that program should do. So uh, keep that in mind too when you're shopping for software. Um, but. Uh, that really kind of covers it. You just want to sort of sit down and think about it for a while. What is it that you are missing that you wish you could have in your embroidery software? Uh, a lot of the uh, editing softwares have, uh, I know in Brilliance calls it a thumbnailer, where you're able to view your embroidery files within Windows, or I'm sure it's on the Mac as well, a little thumbnail right from your um, computer without going into the program, which is pretty slick. Um, but there's a lot of a lot of different options available. Again, I would just kind of narrow it down first. Do you really want editing software or do you want digitizing the full blown package? If you don't need to make designs from scratch, then I would stay with the less expensive, easier to use editing software. I think you'll be a lot happier with it and more productive. So I'm going to look at the computer real quick and see if we have any questions. Um, hi, Marilyn. Good to see you. And uh, Marilyn has a question. I think it's an excellent one. She's asking if her original Designers Gallery 3 will not work with Windows 10. I, I'm not positive on that. I don't think it will but I'm not positive you're not going to hurt anything by uh, trying uh, I know that they've kind of changed the original designers gallery into a whole new program when they uh, changed the platform to allow it to work on Macintosh as well as the Windows environment so that might be uh, what you're running into with with the first one but I'm not positive I would just go to the baby lock website and double check what they have there uh, as a listing um, and you know you can always try by loading it try loading it on your computer if it doesn't run on it it's not going to hurt your computer you can just uninstall it if it's not going to work so that's what I would try and see Curtis says they're having uh, snow, cold and snow, in Lander there. Oh my goodness. We have, here in Texas, we have a nice sunny day. It's been nice and sunny during the day, around afternoon hours, and then it gets cool at night, and it's cool first thing in the morning. It's been crazy. We've been going from wearing coats to not wearing coats to back to wearing coats all in the same day. We just don't know what to do. It can't decide. Well, I think I've gotten all the questions answered for those of you that are here live with me. Um, if you think of some questions, and Marilyn, I might kind of double check on that too for you and get back with you and see what I find out. Um, if you think of any other questions after the fact, be sure to write in the comments. I will save this post and repost it here on Facebook and I will repost it on YouTube as well as Pinterest for those of you that don't do Facebook there's some out there that just won't do Facebook and I get it that's you know 
everybody has their own likes and dislikes. That's what makes it all fun. So uh, if there's no more questions, I'll go ahead and sign off. Please be sure to share and like our page. And feel free to visit us at www.soinspiredbybonnie.com. And that's S-E-W dot S-O. Um, and I hope to talk to you soon. Until next Tuesday, take care. Bye-bye.